Yo, what's going on everyone? It's your boy Nelly Nell from Hoopla. Today we have a super highly anticipated sneaker review on the Nike Jaw 1. Jaw has been going through a lot of controversy this season, but Nike still decided to drop his first signature shoe, the Nike Jaw 1s. And I've got to say that it's a bang whether he be shooting on the court or off the court. To me, the shoe has a lot of resemblance of a Kyrie 1, but of a low top form. In my hands, I have the Day 1 colorway. It has an extended TPU swoosh that's super, super dope, which provides a unique way to carry your kicks into the gym, along with messaging across the shoe that's inspired by his family and work ethic. Think. The handwritten repeating 12 a.m. graphic speaks to his mindset to approach every day with a grind mentality. Then there's Ja's signature, logo, and jersey number that are sketched in his own handwriting. There has been a lot of high expectations on the Jaw ones. Let's see how they really perform. As always, we're gonna start off with the traction. The Jaw one has a solid rubber outsole with a very aggressive herringbone traction pattern to enable the type of cuts and movements essential to Morant's play style. The outsole tread pattern was pretty dense where it was kind of hard to grip the floor. There were times when I was running full speed and I would stop on a dime to change directions and I would slip mildly. The shoe does pick up quite a lot of dust as you guys can see, so wiping is heavily needed. But for some reason, these actually perform better outdoors than they did indoors. For traction, I would say it's pretty solid, but it was inconsistent at times, so I'm gonna give it a three out of five. For materials, the upper has a combination of textile, synthetic leathers, and some TPU reinforcements where the lightweight, breathable materials on the upper help keep your feet cool. The materials aren't very premium at all. It's pretty standard for a first signature budget shoe. I would say the materials are pretty sturdy. It breaks in nicely after some wears. It gets softer and it conforms to your foot fairly nice. Like I said, the materials are nothing special. It's pretty solid where it gets the job done. So three out of five. For support and lockdown, it has a containment system and four foot strap that helps keep your ankles and heels stable. It has a nice heel counter along with TPU reinforcements for good lateral stability. Lastly, it has a raised foam collar that adds ankle support. The shoe feels very stable while being fairly flat. I like how the base of the shoe is very wide. You don't feel wobbly at all. The lockdown was very good. The lacing system was straightforward. The padding around the ankle collar was, you know, kept the back of my heel, you know, very tight. Lockdown, like I said, my foot wasn't moving around, so that's good. For support and lockdown, four out of five. For cushion, the Jaw One has a four foot zoom air unit that helps provide bounce and acceleration. It also has a file on midsole that provides good responsiveness. The cushion feels very flat under your foot and honestly, it feels kind of hard and I barely felt the zoom air. Whereas the file on part feels very firm where it kind of feels like hard cardboard. The shoe is bouncy and responsive, but it just doesn't feel that good. Y'all remember that Kyrie 2 cushioning? Like, that one was mad responsive, but it was also mad hard. So, I feel like these are a very similar cushioning setup. Like, the feel of it is very similar to the Kyrie 2s. There's not that much impact protection on these, which is crazy to me because of how high John ja Morant gets off the floor and in the air and coming down. No wonder he be getting hurt all the time, man. Like... Ain't no impact protection in these. But you are getting good core feel and responsiveness in these. But overall, I would say the cushioning is a 2.5 out of 5. As far as comfort and size fit goes, the Jaw ones run true to size. It is a little bit snug right out of the box, but it does loosen up a little bit after breaking them in. But overall, it's still a pretty snug fit like shoe. So for those of you guys who do not like or do not prefer a snug like fit, you might have to go up half size. And for white footers, y'all might have to go up half size. So I would highly suggest and recommend that you guys go into the store and try them on for yourself because I don't want y'all coming back to me and say, hey Nelly, you said this, you said that. And it didn't feel good or like it didn't fit good. So go on and try it out in store, all right? And as for comfort, these really didn't feel that good to me, especially in the beginning where it felt very hard, like cardboard. But even after breaking them in, they felt a little bit better, but it's not the most comfortable shoe. Overall comfort and size fit, 2.5 out of 5. As far as pricing goes, this is the good news. This is where it gets good. The shoe retails for $110. You know, very low budget price for a first signature shoe. Like I said, you're not getting premium materials. You're not getting the most high tech, you know, very standard for a first signature shoe. If y'all can remember like the Kyrie 1s, 
you know, those didn't have the most tech either. And it didn't have the most premium materials either. But that was a very solid, you know, first signature shoe. Same goes with these. And for my overall rating, I'm gonna give the Nike Jaw Ones a score of three out of five. Surprisingly, I'm pretty disappointed in the Jaw Ones personally. I was super excited and had big hype and expectations for these, but sadly, it didn't perform to my best liking. The traction was iffy and the cushion was a huge letdown. The materials, support and lockdown were standard and nothing special, but did get the job done. It's still a solid first signature shoe, just like the Kyrie ones back in the day, but that was like eight years ago. So you would think the tech would be better in today's time nowadays compared to eight years ago for a first signature shoe. I think the Jaw Ones is a good shoe for small shifty guards who are quick on their feet and who like a lot of court feel and responsiveness. Honestly, in my opinion, I think you're better off getting a Kyrie Low 4 or a Kyrie Low 5 especially now that they're on sale. But if you are a John Moran fan, these are a good shoe. Hope you guys enjoyed that sneak review on the Nike Jaw Ones. Let me know down in the comment section below what are some of y'all thoughts on the Jaw Ones. Do you guys like them or dislike them? And for those of you guys who have hooped in the Jaw Ones, how well did it perform for you guys? Did you guys agree with some of the things I said or disagree with some of the things I said? Or were there some things that came up for y'all that I didn't, you know, bring up? Lastly, let me know what other sneakers you guys would like me to review. Follow me on all my social medias. Link in the description box down below. And until next time, I'm going to catch y'all on the next one. Peace. Thanks, babe. Give it up. Excite me, give it up, wishing y'all can pass me, run it up, step in, I'm moving at high speed, yeah.